my goal here today, we're going to talk about the true cost of running your business, make a plan in your business so that you make a living. Um, I, I just want to, before I start, I want to tell you all that I'm going to have the PowerPoint. This, this, will be, this lecture will be on YouTube so you can review it. Um, the PowerPoint I'll have available to people if they want. If they want to uh, uh, get it from me, I can email it to you. And in the end of this, we have some Excel spreadsheets, which we're going to have on the AFA website in the toolbox, which will help you to calculate the uh, cost of shooting a horse for your income. And you'll see that at the end of this uh, presentation. So I'm going to go through the slides. And as we go, you might have some questions. Write them down. And at the end, I tie everything together, and I think it will become clear. So be patient, take in the information, and then we'll put it all together at the end. So that you're your own employee, that you follow the plan, and you reach your goals. I started shooting horses. Sorry. I started shooting horses in 1984 after two years of apprenticeship, and I've always been a saver, and I've always set goals for myself. And I saved 20% of my income, and in two years, a little over two years, I had enough money to put 20% down on the house, and then I've gone on from there. Um, uh, in savings and <coughs> setting myself up for a retirement and the life that this lifestyle that I want to have. So um, the outline of this of business expenses can help you figure out how much to charge for each horse, uh, so that you can pay yourself a salary. Cost to factor into your business expenses: your salary, the cost of materials, the cost of continuing education your truck, on the road, and what you should be saving to get a new one. Office and customer communication, something I think a lot of us don't factor in at all. Insurance, liability, health insurance, umbrella policy, which is something I think a lot of people don't even know about, and vehicle insurance. Then we have our good old Uncle Sam, all of our taxes, federal, state, and self-employment taxes. Thank you. Um, and savings. Don't forget your savings. Sorry, the slide went away. Uh, of course, individual costs will vary. So, sorry, this is running itself. Okay, step one, pay yourself a salary. Uh, decide on your desired take-home salary. I can't tell if it's working. I'd just like you to go forward. Did it show the next decided shape? Thomas, decide on your desired take-home salary. So you want to figure out how much you want to earn per year in your pocket take-home after taxes and after you put money away for your IRA or savings. Sorry this is not working early enough. So for the purpose of this talk, I'm just going to take a salary of $60,000 annually. And that breaks down to $5,000 a month. That is $1,150 a week to sustain a long and healthy life as a farrier. I'm going to have you only shoot five horses a day. We're going to pretend you're in Sweden where they only shoot five horses a day max. You'll work five days a week. You're going to work 52 weeks per year and for a total of 260 working days per year. No vacation and no sick days in this program. I'm going to answer questions later. Can you write them down? Okay, thank you. Um, so for a $1,150 weekly salary divided by your 25 horses, you need to earn for your salary in the cost of shooting a horse, $46 per horse goes towards your salary. Oh, but wait, hold on. <laughs> Can you work 52 weeks straight and sustain a healthy body and a balanced lifestyle? No. no. I would say no as well. So let's rethink your working life. Come on, baby. OK. 
consider eight traditional holidays, a couple of paid sick days, five educational days. So, the flow is really awesome, isn't it? I don't know why this thing. Uh, five educational days, a few personal days, vacation days. This gives you a total of about 234 work days per year. This is more realistic estimate of what your body can take over a 20 to 30 year shooting career. You'll now work 49 instead of 52 weeks per year. Dang it. No. No. <laughs> no. <coughs> okay, sorry. Did it cut? Okay, you'll now work, um, blah, blah, blah. 49 instead of 52 weeks per year. To reach your salary goal of $60,000 a year, year, you'll need to increase your weekly salary. So now we're gonna divide the 60,000 by 49 weeks instead of 52. So we'll need to have $1,282 a week for your salary. Only for your salary, not for anything else. Divided by the 25 forces, you need to bring in, you need to put on the charge of shoeing. $51.28. <coughs> so did you see what we did there? By increasing what you charge per horse by just $5, which is what we did, you can take off three weeks per year and still reach your salary goal, only working five days a week and having vacation. $5 per horse more. You can take a week off for a family vacation, a recreation, you can take a week for a recreational trip, and you can come to convention. Step two, the cost of your materials. <clears throat> to shoe one horse, this is what my basic estimated costs are. Costs will vary depending on what type of horse you shoe. It worked yesterday. Okay. So, um, shoes, a set of shoes, about 16 bucks. Nails, about two bucks. Uh, sales tax in California, 9%, buck and a half. And then let's add wear and tear on your tools, nippers, knife, rasps, boards, etc. All that comes to about $10 per day uh, for a total of $28 per horse. Now, additional materials, pads, packing, bar shoes, specialty shoes, drill and tap, orium, um, pads and packing can run up five to thirty-five dollars, and then if you don't have a local supply house, you're going to add shipping costs to those materials. Our our supplies are dropped <coughs> off for free, um, and then you need to consider all of these costs as you price materials per shoe. And we're going to factor all these costs into a spreadsheet at the end of this, so you'll see exactly how it works out. I'm not going to leave you hanging. Step three: your education. Open your mind and practice analytical thinking and inquiry. Become a more skilled, oh, the more skilled you become, the easier it is to do your job. Improve your foraging skills to become more successful and efficient. Learn more about the anatomy and physiology and biomechanics of a horse. Improve your skills around and under the horse. Improve your total skill set for the betterment of the horse. Learn to set goals for yourself and enhance your motivation. Find a greater purpose in your work as you gain development. And I would say this is one of the biggest gifts of education, is that you create a community of people who encourage and support your progress. And that is just so vital. More benefits. Free t-shirts, you'll get those here. <laughs> you can talk to vendors and suppliers, and learn about new products, and get free samples. You'll learn something that will make your day easier. And you'll meet people who know more than you do and learn from them. <coughs> so, a lot of minimum of $10 per day towards education, $2,340 a year. And according to a Garner research study, this is super important, you guys. For one hour spent training, you'll gain five hours in productivity. So, you'll become more efficient by a huge percentage. Step four, your rig. This is Roy Bloom's rig, but you can aspire to this. So, costs related to your rig. It's really difficult. This isn't going quite the way I wanted it to come out with. Fuel wear and tear in your vehicle, all the costs associated to your vehicle, uh, routine maintenance, 
Um, and so for the cost associated to your vehicle, including um, your fuel, I'm going to use a dollar a day. And I average 20 miles a day, but I have friends who average 100 or more miles per day. So for the purpose of this talk, I'm just going to go with 50 miles because that's a good number for me. So 50 bucks a day, we're going to put towards uh, wear and tear and the vehicle on the road. But then someday, you're going to need to replace your vehicle, right? So uh, things to keep in mind, the truck can last 10 or more years. A new truck runs about 70 grand. And a lightly used truck can save you a lot of money, 20 grand or more. Uh, leasing may be an option, but there are a bunch of hidden costs. So really explore that before you think that that $189 a month lease payment is what you're actually paying. Uh, so do your homework. So I'm going with setting aside $25 per day equals $487 a month towards a truck payment or $58,500 saved in 10 years towards your new truck. The cost of replacing your vehicle is 50 plus 25, or cost of your work, sorry. The cost, uh, total cost of your work vehicle, placing the vehicle 25 on the road, 50, total of $75 per day. You all saw that for a long time. Now. <laughs> The cost $17,550 a year for your vehicle and towards replacing your vehicle. I don't know why this doesn't work. Okay, step five. Office work and client communication, something that I think a lot of us don't factor in, and it takes a lot of time. And this thing is going to be a good go bus. That little slime thingy. Don't be naughty. Okay, so office work. You, your spouse, or somebody you hire is going to need to spend hours each week doing this. Um, and you've got to take this into consideration. So I'm going to say an average of, I'd like to earn $25 an hour for sitting there doing this computer work, whatever. And so I'm going to average $20 a day, um, which is $4,680 per year for the office related part of your business that needs to be charged to your clients. Um, so you've got to schedule appointments, invoice, deposits, running credit cards, record keeping, bill keeping, ordering supplies, talking to clients, and the funnest thing of all, talking to veterinarians. Uh, then you're going to have a cell phone and internet, and these costs will vary widely, so I'm going to go with $100 per month for that. That's $1,200 per year. Total of $5 per um, day for your phone. So under $25 per day for the communication part of your business, that's $5,850. Step six is taking care of your body, and your body will thank you for it. Healthy life. You tru there truly are, Myron said this to me years and years and years ago, Mommy, there's only X number of horses in your body. And when I was 25, I didn't believe it, but now I do. <laughs> so thinking of that, only X number of horses in your body, take care of your body. That five horses a day, you can make a nice living. And we're going to look at how you want, if you want to make more money, how you can make more money on that same number of horses. Only the X number of hits that your body can take. So being strong is going to make a difference. Working out and have, having a strong core to protect your back, to protect your lower back, will extend your horseshoeing length. Taking care of your body is essential to a long life in horseshoeing. Address injuries as they come. Don't tough them out. Figure out what's wrong and fix it. It only gets worse. It doesn't get better. Treat, repair, rejuvenate, long last, or be long, last longer and be healthier. Diet, you truly are what you eat, just consider that. And then support your body, your one, it's your one essential and totally irreplaceable tool. Think positively, exercise daily, eat healthy, work hard, stay strong, build faith, worry less, read more, and be happy. The cost, I would plan on $10 per day, $2,340 per year. These costs may vary for your individual you know, needs, but that's just like a minimum. So now we come to the really fun part, insurance. 
And we had four categories of insurance. Farrier liability insurance. Don and I have a multi-farrier practice and we have a million dollar uh, general liability. So um, all these different categories, general liability, on and off premises, um, completed operations. Completed operation includes, for example, the shoe comes off and two or three days later, you shoe a horse, two or three days later, the person is uh, riding, shoe comes off, and injuries result to the horse or rider. The, this liability policy covers you. And um, we're paying $1,200 a year, but you can get a lower policy that'll cover you. And um, uh, I've been sued once in my career, and my insurance paid for it. So that was worth it. Um, it more than paid for the policy. Care, custody, and control. So once you take that lead rope, that horse is yours. You are responsible for everything that happens to that horse. If they put it in the cross tie, they're responsible. If you put it in the cross tie, you're responsible. So that's care, custody, and control. Um, this important benefit picks up coverage for injury for any non-owned horses. That means horses you yourself don't own. Uh, as a result of negligence of the farrier or some stupid ass thing happening while you're shooing the horse, like a dog running by and causing havoc, um, while the horse is in your care, custody, and control. Equipment and supplies floater. This one is really cool, I think. Um, the standard limit's up to 5,000. But if something happens with your vehicle and your inventory is stolen, it covers that. Horseshoes, tools, supplies that are in your truck. Um, so, of course, you have to refer to your policy for specific details and other perils covered. So, um, our insurance for liability, this fair policy, which covers, sorry, I can't see the top of it, covers off and on premises, completed operations, care, custody, and control, liability, and equipment and supplies is only $5 per day that we're working at $1,200 per year. So remember the $5 per day, it's $234, it's not $365. We're only working three, 234 days a year. We're not working 365 by any means. My goal is, remember that horse you saw at the beginning? That's my goal. So insurance, health insurance. Health insurance. Nobody plans to get sick or hurt, for sure. Um, but most people need medical care. You need it at some point in your life. And health insurance covers these costs and offers many important benefits. Um, it's critical to maintaining your health and treating incident and accidents. And health in insurance protects you from high medical costs. So let's say that you uh, end up in the hospital for two days. It's like 25 grand a day just to be in the bed. That doesn't cover the doctors and all the other things that come up. So the policies, uh, I find it to be a worthwhile investment. I think of it as catastrophic insurance. I don't want to spend my savings to pay for, the, to pay for, for my health. So I'm willing to put this money forward. So health insurance, $30.76 per day, looking at a $600 premium. At seventy-two hundred dollars per year. Step seven: more insurance. Okay, this insurance is like the secret insurance of the universe. Protect your assets with it and your family with insurance. <coughs> you will only retain about thirty percent of what we talk about today. Truly, you will. So, please make this part of what you retain. The umbrella insurance. How many people know about umbrella insurance? Excellent. I'd like to share with you more about umbrella insurance. Umbrella insurance is a very inexpensive insurance, $100 per million covered. It's just what it sounds like. It's an umbrella to protect your assets. This type of insurance is designed to help protect you from major claims and lawsuits 
As a result, it helps protect your assets in your future. And it does this in two ways. It provides additional liability coverage over the limits of your homeowner's auto or boat insurance. So, I have a friend whose wife was in a catastrophic accident. She was barely injured, but the other party was really, really badly injured. And they've been sued for over $600,000. Their automobile insurance was the $300,000, or yeah, $300,000 bottle of insurance. They didn't know about umbrella insurance, and they're in a, the process of trying not to lose their house because of this lawsuit. So after the accident, the insurance agent told him about umbrella insurance. Why he didn't tell him about it before, and why none of our agents have ever told us about <coughs> umbrella insurance. I've been insured since I was 16 years old. No one's ever told me that I could add a rider to my auto automobile policy and protect everything I have. Even if you only have a truck, if you get in an accident, they're coming after your truck. They're coming after your everything. So uh, for $100 a year, a million dollars is covered. And it takes over where the insurance policies end. And it covers uh, liabilities including false arrest, libel, slander, and liability coverage on rental units if you own them. So get in touch with your insurance agent and find out about the umbrella. We carry a $2 million policy. It's 85 cents per day that we work, and that's $200 per year. So um, it's just absolutely worth the investment. The next insurance that we're going to consider is your vehicle. So um, you should be carrying a commercial policy on your work vehicle because this provides an additional layer of protection between you and and you, your business, and your assets. Again, I'm hoping that you all are accumulating some assets so you have a reason to protect them. And if you don't have much right now, I want you to work towards a future of having them and, and setting up a plan so that you protect yourself so that when you're 65, you aren't like some friends of mine who are crippled and have nothing, literally nothing. They have nothing. They have to rely on their family and friends and that, don't let horse shimmy do that to you. Um, so this is what we pay, $277 quarterly, total of $4.74 per day, $1,108.60 per year. <coughs> and that um, just gives us an additional layer of protection as opposed to insuring ourselves as we do our personal vehicles. But our umbrella policy, covers everything. Our home, our, I'm just going to go back on the umbrella because that's just so important that I want you guys to know about it. Um, so talk to your insurance agent about your vehicle insurance. Um, actually, if you talk to them, they're going to tell you you have to go to commercial. So if you explore this, and then when you're ready, talk to them about commercial insurance. Okay, and next, step eight. Who are we going to talk about now? Come on, baby. Uncle Sam and your taxes. Okay, so pay your state and quarterly taxes. Pay your state and federal taxes and your self-employment taxes quarterly to avoid an April surprise. Don't leave. Um, uh, as a self-employed person, you need to pay self-employment tax. This contribution covers both your self, self, Social Security and Medicare, and you can write, you can take against your um, net income one half of your payment to the Social Security and Medicare if you file a 1040 tax form. So. Um, about 30%, 35% of your net income will go to federal state and federal state taxes and your social security tax. So what I'm doing in my calculations, when you see the calculation sheet, your salary is there and your taxes are an additional line item. 
so that we're going to pull those out. We're going to add those to the cost. Um, and you're going to be very aware of what they are. So you'll need to gross about 35% more than you want in your salary. So smartasset.com calculator. So married filing jointly, you need about $75,000 to, to net a, a $60,000 salary. But this surprised the heck out of me. If you're single, your tax burden is $9,000 higher, according to Smart Asset, and for the net salary of $60,000. So everything that I'm doing is based on married filing jointly in my calculations. Um, your tax burden, of course, is going to vary state to state and upon your income level and your marital status. But um, for, uh, for the purposes of this talk, state, federal, and self-employment taxes come to $103 per day or $24,102 a year. Now this is just a quick slide to give you the, no, it was really quick. It was way quicker than I wanted it to. Here it is. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So this slide is a, a based on a hundred thousand dollar salary, but it just gives you an idea of uh, of what it takes and what the the taxes would be. Um, <coughs> find it on sixty. So sorry, this slide is not perfectly accurate to my talk, but it shares with you. Uh, how, how it works on calculating your self-employment taxes, you would multiply 09.235 times your, your salary to get your Social Security taxes. And it's basically 15.3%. Um, and self-employment taxes, yep, they can be a doozy. If you were working for a boss, your boss pays half of those taxes and you pay half of them. Or they're taken out of your paycheck. Um, so, as a self-employed person, you're the boss of you, so you have to pay all the taxes. Um, half of the self-employment taxes you pay are deductible on a 1040, thus potentially saving you money on your federal income taxes. In this case, the above uh, person who reported $92,000 in self-employment income could deduct $14,000 in self-employment taxes from his income, so you could do half of that. $7,000, saving him almost $2,000 in federal taxes. So those are things that you can talk to your accountant with, or if you're super smart and really good with numbers, you can figure all this stuff out by yourself. I am not, and I cannot. So I have a tax account. Okay, our final step is step nine, savings and long-term financial planning, also known as retirement. Something I'm going to be doing soon. Okay. As Don well knows. One third of all Americans have no retirement savings. According to E-Trade. None. Zero. Zip. Zilch. One third. That means one third of people in this room have no retirement savings. According to E-Trade, that could be wrong. It could be more, it could be less. But basically, um, if you don't have retirement savings, I want you to th start thinking about taking care of yourself. Sorry, this clicker is not working. This, this talk would have been so smooth, you guys. If the clicker had worked, I would have been like a rock star. Okay, so put your money to work for your future. Put it now. Start now. Start tomorrow, or when you go home from work. Plan to add 15% of your desired salary amount to our total need for price per horse towards your maximum IRA or Roth IRA contributions and tax deferred investments. So key here is things that you don't have to pay taxes on before you put the money in. Um, your contributions to a traditional IRA can receive can result in reduced federal and state tax payments as well as providing tax deferred growth long term. I know this is boring, but it's really, really, really important because you don't want to be the 65 year old guy who's crippled and has nothing. Okay? I don't want you guys to be that. Especially everybody who's under 30. Start, start this. Um, 
Okay, blah, blah, blah. Qualify for the associated non refundable tax credits. Tax deduction. Keep the equivalent of three months of your living expenses in a liquid account just in case you ever need it. If you never need it, you can have it for your retirement. And what I chose to do instead of disability insurance, which I could not ever find something that I thought worked for me, was put that money into that account so that we have that available to us if we had something catastrophic happen. I'm super lucky because I have a partner. I have a business partner and a life partner too. Double benefits. Um, so if something happens to one of us, we can cover. And then all our friends come in and help us too. Okay, so lots of things to save for retirement. And there's also college for your kids, vacations, buying a home, um, you know, whatever you want to save for. Uh, if you hire a financial planner, check out their track record carefully. Do your homework on this. Make sure nobody rips you off. Know what's happening with your money. Keep track. Be in contact. Be aware. <coughs> Watch what's happening in the market. Uh, just don't, don't ignore your future. You can invest in many areas, so explore what will work for you. Your retirement, $38.46 46 per day, or $9,000 per year. Okay, now comes the part you've all been waiting for, I think. Let's break down shooing five horses a day. <coughs> Come on, let's break it down. We're going to put all the numbers together so that you know what you need to charge per horse to have a take-home salary, stressing salary, your money, you take home this salary of $60,000 per year. You pay yourself. You make sure you charge enough when you shoe that horse that you make your salary goal. Okay, so your gross income is going to be $165,376 per year for your net income of $60,000. And that's about a 37, 37 percent is what we figured out. You're going to, you're going to take in your pocket is about 37 percent of your gross income. Um, and a veterinarian, according to the veterinarian that told me this, um, and she's pretty smart. Veterinarians are only bringing in about 30% of their gross. So we're doing much better than they are at 37%. Okay, so let's break it down. Uh, plans your costs will cover. Woohoo! Your daily gross, your salary, it's going to be $556 per day and 41 cents. Your materials, about $140 a day at $28 per horse. This cost is variable, right? We know this cost is variable because we might be adding different materials to our job. Okay, continuing education, minimum of $10 a day. Again, a variable cost, you might wanna spend more. Truck on the road, $75. If you drive more, it's gonna be more, right? So that's something you need to consider. And remember guys, I have, it, it, I love that you're taking pictures, I'm totally happy you can record this, but I can, I can share a PowerPoint with you, I can share the Excel spreadsheet with you right now after this meeting if you want that. So just know that I'm going to provide you with what we're having here today so that you can, you know, regurgitate it some more. What do cows do? Ruminate. <laughs> Ruminate. Okay. <laughs> Okay, then our office costs, 25 bucks a day minimum. Healthy life, minimum of 10. I do way more than that because I want to work out and get a chiropractor and have a massage and all kinds of things. <coughs> a liability insurance, that's going to be fixed on my policy. That doesn't change with how much I want to get for my daily income. Health insurance, that's going to stay the same, doesn't change. Umbrella insurance, that's going to say that same little 85 cents for my $2 million. Vehicle insurance, that's going to stay the same. It might be a little bit more. If you drive a lot more, they're going to charge you more. 
Your state and federal taxes, self-employment, Medicare, and retirement will remain the same because your salary of $60,000 is the same. The daily cost to shoe that horse, those, horse, those five horses, the daily costs that you need to charge, $706.74. Now, we're going to break down even more to each horse, if we can get the cursor to work. Okay, each horse. Okay, surprisingly, that is what you need to charge if you're shooting five horses per day to make your nut for your salary. And this is, you are the most important person in the world. You are the most important thing in this equation. You've got to make this happen. So therefore, you need to charge $28 for materials. Stop moving. $2 for continuing ed. $15, at least $15 for the truck, at least $5 for the office, blah, blah, blah. Two for the horse, insurance, taxes. So our total number that you need to be charging for a horse, if you're, char if you're shooting five horses per day, is $141.35. And that's with my plan of having three weeks off, not working weekends. Um, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Work for me. The computer doesn't like me, you guys, and this thing really doesn't like me. I'm so sad. Okay. Your daily revenue requirements to run your fairer business, pay yourself the salary of $60,000 a year, are $706.74, 234 days per year. Per horse, at five horses per day, $141.35. So we're just going to run those numbers one more time. This may surprise you, but not anymore because I already showed you the numbers. What it really costs to make your salary. You need to charge at five horses per day, $141.35. Daily revenue requirement, $706.74. Gross annual income of $165,376 with your net income slash salary of $60,000. Okay? So now, now it's time to hire yourself. Treat yourself like you're the freaking employee. Treat yourself like you were a journeyman plumber, like you were a fireman, like you were a policeman, like you were working at Google and they pay you a salary and they pay all of these expenses and they put money in for your taxes and they put money in for your retirement and then you you match the other part but treat yourself like you're an employee put yourself first stop putting your client first stop having your client be the one who gets the deal why do they get a deal when it's your body your body is not going to last I can ask everyone in here who's over 60 to stand up and ask them what hurts. <laughs> and then I can ask everyone over 50 to stand up and ask them what hurts. And I can ask everyone under 40 to stand up and they're going to say they don't hurt. But you will hurt. You will hurt. This job is hard physical labor. So you need to put yourself first. Okay, enough of that. So now is the really fun slide. I think you're going to really enjoy this. If I can ever get it to work. Okay, for a salary goal of $60,000, we're going to look at what you need to earn for five, six, and seven horses a day. I mean, what you need to charge your client. This is this is what you want to charge. Okay, hello, hello. Okay. So, our salary remains the same no matter how many horses we shoe. Our daily salary remains the same. The cost to the client for our salary gets lower, right? Our material costs remain the same per horse. Increase with the number of horses. And again, if you do something special, that cost is going to go up. Continuing education. If we shoot more horses, it's less expensive for our client each day. We're going to charge them less for that. Daily truck on the road, that's going to go down for each horse shot because that's a number that we're factoring. What? 
office, again, goes down. Healthy life goes down. Liability insurance goes down. Health insurance goes down. Umbrella insurance goes down. Vehicle insurance goes down. The percentage of the tax dollars each client pays goes down. And the cost it goes from 141 for five to 122 for six to 109 for seven. Okay? So that's up to you how many horses you want to shoot per day. Um, to, to bring home your income. Remember the varied costs, things that are going to vary, materials, education, your truck, your office, your health insurance, things that are going to stay the same you're in your total net. Salary, taxes, savings remain the same. Though that portion doesn't change. Um, but now we're going to look at, let's say we want to bring in 120 grand a year. So I'm going to give you the numbers of horses for five, five, six, and seven horses. What you need to bring in for 120 grand. There's a cursor, and it doesn't like me. Okay. So for 120 grand, this is your salary goal. This is not your gross income. This is what you're going to take home to pay for your life. So you'll need to decide what does my life cost me. That's what your salary is. And then you're going to put it into the salary calculator that's going to be on the website after convention in the toolbox. And you can find out basically what you need to charge per horse. So for 120000 I changed in my salary calculator that I have that you guys are going to get to use. I put in 120 Oh, I put in 120 but I didn't share it with you. Really, cursor? Okay, so 120. We put, now we're going to put 120 into the salary calculator. And ta -da! <coughs> So if we want to make $120,000, home, take home pay, then we're going to need to charge $221 for those five horses. Our daily salary is going to increase, right? Our material cost remains the same per horse. Our continuing education remains the same because that number doesn't change when we increase our salary. Daily truck stays the same. You may change that because you, you do more driving. Office, healthy life, those things stay the same. All those things from 140 from the materials to the vehicle insurance stay the same. What changes is your salary goal, your taxes, insurance, and savings. Sorry, in, by insurance, I mean self-employment insurance or taxes. Slow down. Self-employment taxes. Okay, so your daily gross becomes $1,104.94, $221 per horse. And then as you go on, again, those numbers, what changes is what you get per horse, what your salary is per horse. 121 for five we need to charge our clients, 189 for six we need to charge our clients, 166 for seven is what we need to charge our clients. So um, does anybody have any questions about what we're talking about? Um, I'm sorry that I can't change numbers live for you that I would love it if I could, but I couldn't figure out how to put an Excel spreadsheet into a PowerPoint. But um, if you have any questions, I can answer them. Yeah. This also that twenty-eight dollars per horse. Is that also calculating resets? No, it's just a basic material cost. So you would need to decide if you just want to charge the same every time, and if you charge different, that'll change your material cost calculation. Right. Yeah. On the $28 a horse for supplies, did that take into what it cost to keep that horse shot? Uh, it was just one set of shoes? Because I find that a lot of times, keeping a horse shot costs you more than just like replacing shoes, driving to replace shoes, uh, those type of things. Right. No, I didn't factor that in. I try to keep this really simple. Okay. So um, you can, you can, if you want to say you're factoring in 
Uh, in, the in the cost calculator, you can put in your numbers. Yeah. So what, I, what, what you might want to do is say, I'm going to average 20 fixes a year. It costs me 100 bucks a fix. That's 2,000 bucks. So I'm going to add 2,000 bucks, divide that by 234, and put that into my daily, add that to my daily material cost. Okay? And That's, I find that, I find yeah. that dead inventory eats me up a bunch too. Yeah, so all yeah, those I mean, things you, you've got to think about, like how much, yeah, in our garage, for sure. We have way too much inventory. Yeah. We love it though. We, we look at it, we go, wow, I remember when I used you. <laughs> <laughs> you were my favorite shoe. <laughs> the vets really liked those wedge aluminum bar shoes 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, those only cost $30 each. So I still love you. So, um, are there any other questions? Donate, yeah. him, donate him to local shoeing school and write him off. There you go, I'll do it. That's great, Steve. Okay, um, Dean. One point that I would like to make, especially to the younger farriers, for your retirement, have it automatically taken out of your account Good point. so you never see it to spend it in the first place. Right on. Yeah. Exactly right. Save as much as you can. Yep. Yep. Uh, how do you calculate your yearly increases for living costs or inflation? Or do you have a standard yearly percentage that you increase? Well, then you would need to say, if I want to add 3% for inflation to my $120,000 salary, mm -hmm. um, I would put that in the calculator. The calculator is going to calculate my taxes. It's going to calculate my salary. And then you need to increase your cost of materials and all your other increased costs. You would have to add those in individually into the calculator. And then the calculator has a formula for each square. But it will auto automatically give you the daily, daily cost. And once you've added all your numbers in, it'll tell you what you need to charge per horse. Do you do a standard yearly increase? No, I'm super bad about that. Yeah. We charge a lot of money to shoe horses, though. So, um, we, we have a nice padding. I do like $25 every couple of years. I'm bad, that's, bad. that's a bad part of my business. Yeah, I've never been good at that part. Your care, custody, and control policy, is that separate from your liability or is it built into it? It's a general failure liability policy that has care, custody, and control in it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, I use Markel. And as a certified journeyman farrier, I have a 10% discount on my um, insurance. And if you're an APF member, tell me why this is, because they work to deal. If you join APF, you save 20% with, with Markel. So just if, if that would give you enough savings that it would be worth it to join the APF, you could do that. Or if you're already a member, you could get a discount on your insurance um, just by being a member. You don't even have to have gotten your certified journeyman status. I had one more question over here, I think. No? Okay. Yeah. Um, just a comment. I think when you talk about prices, we have to be clear over what we might need versus what our perceived worth is. So in other words, if the public thinks whatever shoe and horse is worth two hundred dollars in your area, if you need two twenty five, it doesn't mean you're gonna get it. It's not as simple as saying, Well, I'm just gonna charge you. Right. That, I mean it, it, it sounds like a simplistic thing. But it, that can be really tough, and sometimes you have to figure out a way to lower your fixed costs. Totally. So you can fit in with what the going rate is. Sometimes right. Sometimes the answer is you need to move. Correct. You know, sometimes the answer is you need to move. Yep. Yes. Um, but a very important thing I'm trying to get across to everybody is that understanding what's here and, and that how much it costs to shoe a horse. If you want to make a living, if you want to have a retirement. We live in an amazing country. I am more than happy to pay my taxes. I, I think we have such freedom and such amazing things that I, I'm happy to share that with Uncle Sam. Um, and then when I retire, I, I will have my Medicare, which is fantastic, Don can tell you. And my, <laughs> uh, okay, onward through the fog, great. How do you, uh when it comes to time, tax time, do you uh, depreciate your truck or do you take mileage? Uh, all the, this is just a super basic formula. Yeah, but how could, 
Like, um, oh, one or the other. One, yeah, one of you either depreciate your truck or you take mileage, right? And once your truck is depreciated, then you take mileage, don't you? Is that correct? I don't think you can. Once, once you depreciate start, it, you've got to stay with it. Yeah, you just get that yeah. Okay, uh, that is something I'm not good at. That's why I have a tax account. And I didn't have time to call her to find out that detail. You Lori. depreciate your truck. Okay, and when it's depreciated over five years, that's it. But you still can then do gas or oil. Okay. 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 Great. Thank you. Rule. One of the things I think is one of the reasons to come to these places is so you can get clients that can afford that. A little 4-H girl and somebody that isn't here, it should be here, is suing for ten dollars. Right. You know, like that's that's one of the reasons you're here is because you could you could learn how to to, to get clients that can afford it. Right, right. Part of being here and part of education is to improve yourself so you can move up the so you can get a ladder. Yep. That's how I got there. Any other questions? Yeah. Bruce Daniels had a comment about that, the Robin Hood method. Yeah. Steal from the rich and give to the poor. Absolutely. You can, you can choose how much you charge a client. If you have somebody who can't afford you who you love, you can chew their horse. Nobody else needs to know you did it for $75. You have a question, yeah. I was just curious, as someone kind of, you know, getting started and building up clients and stuff, how do you prioritize all of the expenses? You know, I can't, you know, pay for all of this insurance and everything right, right now. Right. So what do I pick first? So now I can afford to pay this insurance. Now I can afford to save for a new truck. Do you have any good advice for that? Or that we can have a conversation <laughs> after this. I'm happy to talk to you. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Yeah. I just had a comment. Friends and family turned financial planners are not always a good plan. Good, uh, good thing, yeah. Uh, anyone that comes peddling to you looking for your, your money, the best is going to invest on his behalf. Correct. Stay away from that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, does anybody else have any questions? <laughs> Go out there and make a plan, follow through and make a wonderful life for yourself. Thank you for joining me. Um,